joining me for this is actually pretty historic because it's actually the first ever play interview we've had on the Coast Watch Football Podcast. It's Noah Smith. How's it going, man? It's going great. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. I want to ask, how are you settling in so far to the Central Coast? Uh, it's been awesome so far. Uh, it's hard to not love moving up here. Just it's such a beautiful city. The weather's been great so far, and I'm close to the beach. Uh, all the boys have been so good. So it's just been amazing nice. so far. A lot of fun. How does it compare to Adelaide? I haven't never been to Adelaide personally, but in terms of beaches and stuff, how does it compare? Where I grew up in Adelaide, I was two minutes from the beach. So I've lived on the beach pretty much my whole life, but the beaches are a bit different. Adelaide is just all flat, very calm. Here it's a bit more wavy and a bit different, but um, it's similar in the terms that it's close to the beach. And Adelaide's very, it's very similar in the way that it's laid back, very relaxed, a lot of cafes, just go chill. It's, yeah, it's good like that. Nice. I'm glad you mentioned the cafes because that was actually going to be my next question. When it comes to coffees, who does it better, the Central Coast or Adelaide? Well, I actually haven't been able to experience the Central Coast coffees that much because it's only been, we only got out, out of lockdown on True. Monday or whatever, but I'm, I'm interested to go explore a bit and I have a nice cafe just down the road for me. So where I've been going in lockdown, that was really good, but I'll have to get out and, and try and find some more good ones. Hey, let's jump into your footballing career. Coming through the ranks at Adelaide United. It was interesting actually listening to the chat that you did um, on the Mariners official YouTube channel, like talking about how, you know, you were playing sport from a young age, Aussie rules, basketball was in there as well. What made you choose a career in football? Oh, that's a good question. Well, when I was um, young, I just wanted to play everything. And mm. football was the first thing that I could start like at the youngest age. So I just played that as a kid and I loved it. And then I start, started playing basketball and, uh, and Aussie rules as well. But then when I got to about 12, 13, I made the state team for soccer. Um, and then it was like, I had to choose because that was on Saturday mornings. My school Aussie rules was Saturday mornings as well. And I thought, well, if I'm in the state team, I might as well give this a crack. And, and that's really why I stuck with, with football and I loved it. It was my favorite sport as a kid. So we'll talk about Adelaide United, of course, because you spent the last few years there as well. Joined the youth system in 2017 and made your first team debut. I actually didn't realize this, but it was actually against the Mariners in February 2020. We're seeing at Adelaide United now a whole as, as a as a really good crop of young players that have come through Adelaide United, and, and you were a part of that, of course. You know, Cassini, Yangi, the Toure brothers. You know, Louis Dorigo, all these players. You know. Uh, now becoming first team players in the A League, what was it like being a part of that that youth squad at Adelaide United coming up? Was it quite a tight knit group? Yeah, well, they, it was awesome being in that team because we were all like best friends, and then on the pitch, it just made it even better. Mm -hmm. And we had a, an amazing coach, Paul Pezos, who who just got knew how to get the best out of everyone. And if you look at all the young kids that came up through the youth team and ended up playing for the first team, Paul coached pretty much all of them. And I give a lot of credit for my. Um, like pathway and journey to him because he just managed to get the best out of everyone and make us the best players. So I guess it's a credit to Adelaide United for hiring him and keeping him there for quite a few years. And, and I think he's really helped all the young kids, no matter where they've gone, like Carlo Armiento at Perth, Pacific Neon Gabira, who's moved there as well. And, and he's coached all of them and made a big impact on our careers. You had a pretty decent stint um, in the first team, especially in those opening 10 rounds. I remember you playing round one. I think that was um, away to Western United. I remember that was that opening fixture of last opening season. Game. Yeah. Playing with a lot of these really high profile plays, you know, Craig Goodwin, Tommy Urich and, you know, Ben Haller and a lot of big names in this Adelaide United side. What was that like? You know, your first experience um, you know, at first team level? It was interesting because I had been training with these players for, for a couple of years. So I felt a part of the squad, but obviously I had never really played. So then when I finally played my first game at the start of last season, I kind of, it was a bit of a relief that I'm like, I finally got to play. But then also the, the older players, like you mentioned, and Michael Jakobsen, who played next to me as well, he just made it so comfortable for me, um, Goody and Tommy and all them. So Steph as well. And um, they just made it comfortable and made the transitions pretty seamless. So, it was it was really enjoyable because they were they were there to guide me and, and make it as easy for me as they could. Coming into uh, 2021, you've obviously joined the Central Coast Mariners, and uh, tell us tell us the the process of, of of how you came to joining the Central Coast. You know, were there conversations with Monty involved? What was that process like? Well, it actually happened pretty quickly. I was just um, chilling at all my friend's house on a Friday night. And I get a call from my agent and he says, uh, Nick Montgomery is interested. Um, I'm going to set up a, a Zoom call for you on Monday. So this was Friday night. So then I'm like, awesome. This is cool. I like, I know about the club and how they like to promote young players and stuff. I thought this would be perfect. So then Saturday morning, I'm, I'm at the gym, I think. And then I come home and I get a call. It's like, yeah, Monty wants to meet with you now. So I'm like all stressed. I'm like, wow, 
like what's going on and then i call him we talk monty and i talked for about an hour awesome had a great chat get mm-hmm. off the phone speak to serge the assistant for a bit and then about that afternoon um uh, buddy my agent calls me and he says yep they want to sign you so it all happened it all happened within not even 24 hours and wow. and i knew there was no doubt in my mind that this would be a perfect fit because i want to be able to play and i know how they like uh, how they can develop young players as you've seen you know, with all the socceroos that they've had and um yes yeah, so i thought it'd be perfect and and it's worked out well so far i mean as i've said we're so glad to have you here at the club it's an exciting team that i think we're building this season and we were certainly the the story of last season i guess the mariners you know tip to, to pick up the wooden spoon again we'd picked up four wooden spoons in the last five years end up you know against all odds finishing third so uh a lot of fans are curious to hear about how the team is going into this season knowing that you know, there's such big heights to sort of meet if we want to sort of achieve that same that same finish. Give us a little bit of insight in terms of how the team is is gelling at the moment. What sort of style of football can we expect from the Mariners this season? It's going to be very, very high paced. I think like Monty and Sergio, all we want to do is score goals. And that's that's how you win football games, scoring goals. And and by keeping the, the uh, good core of players like Rosie and RT and Beerus mm-hmm. and then Ollie in the midfield and adding adding players in like Sai and Benny, our two new signings who are just amazing in front of goal and going forward. So that's just a great complement of uh, players that can defend and go forward and score goals. So it should be a very exciting year. And I hope all mm. the fans uh, love us scoring goals because that's what it's about. We're keen, man. We're keen. We can't wait. Hopefully we'll see a number of goals scored in round one. Of course, it's the F3 derby. How are you sort of feeling knowing that that's the first round fixture? And have the boys spoken to you a lot about the F3 derby? I haven't really thought about it much because it's so long away. I'm just trying to get through this preseason. But on Saturday, I was speaking to Oli and, and Simo a bit, and they were just stressing that, like, doesn't matter how we win this game, it's just important that we win. We can have one shot to their 10. We're, this is a game to just win. You just win, and it will set, up, set us up for a great season. So it's starting to hit me that bit how important and big of a game this is for our fans as well to get, get the season off on the right foot. So it's very exciting, and I just can't wait to get the season started. And I also want to talk about as well the aspirations, I guess, just for the Mariners this season. Is there a goal in mind for the club? Is it simply make finals? Is there a specific target sort of set in mind? What has Monty laid out for you guys this season? Uh, every day we talk about being the best, just being the best. All our standards are the best. Our, our trainings are the best. Everything you do, you try and do it with perfection because that's the way we're going to get, have the best season. And we believe with the squad we're putting together, and the way this preseason's gone so far, that there's no reason why we can't be the best team in the league, and and build on what what the boys did last year because last year was an amazing year. And think we uh, the squad net didn't really lose that many players. We gained some great imports. So so there's no reason why we can't be up there and. and fighting for titles again and the last one i want to ask you as well is that on uh, on the coast watch football uh youtube channel we've been doing a a fifa career mode series playing as the mariners are you much of a fifa player yourself do you play much xbox or playstation it's funny so previous like three four years i've retired from fifa i used to be massive and then i moved yeah. up here and we were in lockdown i'm like i'm a bit bored all the boys are talking about it so i asked um nikolai muller um if he had a spare playstation because i knew he had ps5 so he brought me home this whole contraption, a suitcase that opens up, PlayStation <laughs> built in with wheels, built oh. for traveling. So oh, I've God. just got that set up right next to me and I've been fully into it, fully into it this FIFA. And it, it's been awesome just talking to the boys in, in the party. And uh, it's been great just to kill some time while we were in lockdown. So good, man. So good. Well, Noah, thanks so much for, for taking the time to have a chat on the podcast. I do appreciate it so much. It's really exciting to sort of, you know, hear that little bit of insight in terms of how the build, how the team is building for the upcoming season. So, uh, yeah, man, thanks for, thanks for jumping on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that chat that I had with Mariners defender Noah Smith. If you have indeed enjoyed, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a like on this video. It helps out the page a lot. Once again, guys, I really do appreciate you listening and sticking by the podcast. Have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday.